Alright guys and girls, this is a long plane review for Nightmare on the Amstrad CPC, released by Activision in 1987, then later re-released on the Mastertronic budget label Ricochet a few years later. And so for those of you that don't know, Nightmare is a famous kids TV show in the UK and is very beloved and still quite simply awesome even today. Starting in 1987 and lasting till 1994, contestants take part in a computer generated fantasy world usually set in dungeons and caves. The idea was one kid put on a helmet that covered their vision and they were sent out into the dungeon and there was three other kids who acted as guides and barked instructions at them like turn left, walk forward, take food on the table and so on. It was a massive success, especially because of its role playing and computer game feel, combining several genres, even like text adventures, and a level of technical achievement not normally seen in game shows. Because it was filmed against a blue screen, and a lot of the computer effects could be generated on the fly using the uh, Space Ward Supernova Paint Systems computers. So, yeah, lots of computer graphics in the TV show. And the creator of Nightmare, Tim Child, was directly inspired to create this from two ZX Spectrum games, these being Attic Attack and Dragon Talk. So that's the pedigree we're dealing with here when it comes to the home computer game, which is a game of a show with computer graphics that was inspired by computer games. So this should be really good, right? Well... Oh my ears, what in the name of Trey God is this god awful cacophony? Well, it's the world's worst rendition of the Nightmare theme song, ladies and gentlemen. Yikes. Um, hmm. Well, this is clearly a Specky port because they've emulated the Specky Beeper music. This is exactly what the Specky version sounds like and would have sounded like, and someone has gone to the trouble of writing some kind of emulator code to emulate the speaker on the Specky. Why bothering? Why go to that trouble? Anyway, welcome watchers of Illusion to the Castle of Confusion. I am Traegar the Dungeon Master. Your quest to seek knighthood begins here, so let us turn a page in time and see what lies within. Thank you, Traegar, and yeah. Uh, well, the, the first annoyance is a, a simple press the fire button doesn't start the game and you have to hold down the first button. Some people don't even get the game started and give up on this one. And then the vast majority get stuck in the first two rooms here and never play it again. So let's get out of this first room. And you can have a look at what's in your inventory there. Um, so get used to the key. So you press shift to start the commands at the top there and to cycle through them. Uh, but you can speed things up by pressing the first letter of the command on the keyboard like I for inventory or G for give to speed things up. Then use enter or return to select your choice. Yeah, you can speak to the old man there. He says, I'm old and I will waste away. That might be a bit of a clue. Um, it's really cumbersome, this, um, <laughs> interface. So we've taken the foos there and we're going to take the rock. Um, but eventually you start getting used to this command system and and you can fairly quickly get to do what you need to do. It's still not fun though but then there's a whole lot of commands and items. So we're giving the food to the old man here. They're going to give him the water and then we're going to ask old man. And this is the first puzzle we have to solve in the game. And there you go, you go. He says, use the magic spade, use it one time only. So then we've got to take the spade. And that is the first puzzle in the game. Well, I wish they could have devised a better command system. Like you could pull up a menu where you can use up, down, left and right to choose the command and then the item, uh, like a little pop-up box or whatever. And of course the fire button is mostly used for weapons, rocks, and then eventually the sword. So we're taking a rock here. We're gonna to need to use this in the next room we get to. The door to the right is locked. Um, and this is where most people get stuck. If they haven't got the spade, 
um, then uh, you're kind of a bit stuck if you haven't done exactly what you need to do with the old man there. Uh, you might find it ages trying to work out what you need to give to the old man before he does anything. And that puts a lot of people off. What we need to do here is dig the ground cause with the spade. And down we go into a room with guards quickly where you need to just move around quickly. And we want to throw rock. And use a five button there. We lost quite a bit of energy. It's actually better if you just run off the screen at the bottom there. By the way, your energy is depicted by the candle on the right there, and at no point can you restore any of that candle. So even if you take food, um, like you would in the real Nightmare TV show, the food does not restore any of your life force, as it's known in the TV series. The life force wasn't, depict wasn't depicted by a candle. It was depicted by like this uh, face that slowly turns into a skull, which is really, really creepy. It used to creep me the hell out. Um, so we've got a candle, so I don't know why they changed that. Anyway, this is the second job we need to do, is actually find the sword. So we don't need to bother with rocks anymore, and you can press fire button to stab people and monsters with your sword. There you go. So now we're off on a um, quest now, to collecting three pieces of gold to get the locket from the maid and some other things to defeat the dragon. And once you defeated the dragon at the end, the game is won. And you need the fat locket and pitch to defeat the dragon. Anyway, we've just encountered our first wall monster the here. It says, be still. I like to examine what I'm about to eat. My statements can be true or false. Answer the opposite. So we need to give the wrong answer of the true and false here. Titanic sailed from Southampton, which is true, so you select false. Uh, next question. Stonehenge was built by the Druids. That is false. Um, Stonehenge was built a thousand years before the Celts and therefore Druids arrived. And Traegod is the Dungeon Master, which is true, so you select false. So you could get tripped up there by giving the actual correct answer, but there you go. Um, you can go this time, but next time I will be less patient. All right. Um, so we need to take the gold here and then get out of here pretty quickly. Stab the guard there, lost a little bit of energy. Just just hammer the fire button and get into them as quick as possible. The, the candle or life force also drains down uh, over time as well. So you don't want to spend too long. Um, okay, I think we're going to encounter the Executioner here, who's um, going to te uh, mm, tease us with some in, um, difficult puzzles here. We'll see. <laughs> Answer free correctly, you go by if less, I feed on you. Right. Which is the odd one out here? Well, it's the second one down. It's xylophone with the letters rearranged. All the others with their letters are rearranged are string in instruments. So you've got violin at the top there, guitar the third one down, and banjo the bottom one. This one is quite easy. Which word ends the first and begins the second word? That's A-T. And this third puzzle, I have not worked out how you solve it. It's letter V. If anyone knows how to solve this puzzle, let me know. I only did this by a process of elimination. Um, but yeah, I still can't work out that puzzle. I've tried um, uh, substituting the letters for the numbers in the alphabet in order. Um, I can't see a pattern there at all. So anyway, never mind. Mm. Okay, so right. Carrying on here. Um, Right, where am, what was I going to tell you about? Okay, also there are two oracles in the game that you can speak to that will give you clues. One oracle is good, one oracle is bad. The bad one will basically tell you the opposite of what you should do and lead you into trouble. Only one will answer per room, I believe. I've got another wall monster here to tackle. And you can't ask them any more questions once you've asked them in a particular room. So, for example, in the very, very first room with the old man, you had to give food and water to. The bad oracle will appear and say, trust no one, give away nothing and drink plenty. 
Oh, the question here. Bonita's Wonder Boy's girlfriend. No, uh, but Wonder Boy's girlfriend is Tina, I believe. Windsor is the royal family surname. That is true. Of course. And um, who invent Marconi invented the telephone? That is false. Most people think it's Alexander Graham Bell. Well, he had the first patent for it. The history of that is complex, and it was arguably Antonio Meucci, but there are others involved with its discovery and development. Anyway, moving on. So, yeah, the oracle, like I was giving you an example there, the bad oracle will appear in the first, very, very first room and tell you to drink plenty and trust no one and give away nothing. Which, of course, is bad advice, and therefore you should trust the old man in the dungeon. Give him something in your inventory, i.e. the food. And the drink plenty is probably a hint to also give the old man water. So that's how you would have solved the first room. You need to ask the oracle and uh, decide if it's a bad oracle or a good oracle with its hints. Mm. So a lot of people get quite stuck in this game and don't realise you can ask oracles for help. How useful they are later in the game, I don't know because I haven't bothered using them. I've just followed a map and some guides to beat this game. This is an odd one out puzzle. Um, it will be the fourth one alone because if you look at the, f f the three furthest ones to the right, the black squares in the top left corner you will see that the three stripes and two of them are vertical and then one of them there is horizontal. So you choose the fourth one there and that will be the odd one out. So anyway, right, the coder of this game, uh, well, the uh, responsible for the conversion of this game from the Specky original to the Amstrad is Melvert Dink or Mev Dink. His Amstrad work is pretty much all quick, dirty ports of the specky versions with bizarrely emulated beeper music like we heard on the title screen and he's done the same in super hang on enduro racer big trouble in little china and he also worked he also did conversions of prodigy hammer fist and last ninja 2 uh, last ninja 2 also had that horrible beeper music converted over um oh there's a potion here uh, the potion will allow you to cast spells. We're going to drink it in a little bit when it's safer to do so. Um, but the credits for the Specky Coders include John Paul Eldridge, uh, who often did a lot of music on Oliver Twins games. Um, oh, the odd one out here is... Let me try and remember. Uh, the third of this one on the right there because it's got vertical stripes, not horizontal stripes, like the two previous ones, like numbers three and four. It's number five there. Um, M. Dean got a credit as well on this game. Not sure what she did, no other credits on the Amstrad. And Saul Mar Marchese on graphics. Again, he did art and free of Mev Dink CPC conversions in Big Trouble in Little China, Endure Racer and Super Hang On. But he also did some really good stuff on the Amstrad with Afterburner, Galaxy Force, Aliens, the UK version, and Ghostbusters 2 on the Amstrad. Right. So uh, we're off to, I think we're off now to find the maid and get the locket. Oh, monsters. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to do is, what we're going to do is we're going to drink the potion here. And if, this will allow us to cast spells from now on. We're doing this in a location where monsters aren't spawning. But don't stand around too long or Merlin will appear there and monsters spawn attacking you. Right, so we should be going to the maid's bedroom now. I'm going to talk a little bit about the other versions uh, of this game. Uh, so the ZX Spectrum version. So obviously the CPC version is a direct port of the Specky. Bloody beeper music included. Um, so it's pretty identical. The main game window is all monochrome though. Uh, although the CPC version has different colours for the sprites as you can see. But it's not much to write home about. Uh, but the Specky version does run... Uh, slightly faster. We can't talk to the maid here. Uh, there must have been a clue elsewhere. But what you want to do here is give three pieces of gold. And then you can take the necklace that you can see around her neck. You need this necklace to defeat the the dragon. And take... Lo sorry, lock it. And there you go. The locket has disappeared from her neck there. Uh, as I was saying, the specy version runs slightly faster. Commodore 64. Oh, hang on. Before we do that, there's a locked door here that you can't seem to open any other way apart from using a spell. 
Uh, sorry, I made a mistake in my selection there. Um, so, spell. And you want to use Casper. Casper is used to open doors. And that door can now be opened with that spell. And uh, we've got a nod one out uh, room here. So what you want to do, you see, look here is the white square, if you're going clockwise around these puzzles and the pieces, the white square always follows the... Um, oh, sorry, my apologies. The um, black dot always follows the white square going clockwise. The odd one out is the first one on the far left because the dot is preceding the white square. Anyway, so that's your puzzle solved there. Um, Commodore 64 version uh, has a nice tune on the title screen, but it isn't the famous theme song, so why bother? Anyway, uh, in-game, despite the graphics being a lot blockier uh, and still in about four colours, this looks a bit better, actually. seems feels more colourful. Um, especially the main sprite. Um, the main sprite looks really good, actually. Um, it's still clunky as hell as a game, but it's probably the best 8-bit version just for that. But there's no music in game, which is surprising for the Commodore 64. Uh, next, we got I'll move on to 16-bit machines. Atari ST, the only other version. Um, so it's identical to the 8-bit versions, but with a lot more colourful graphics. Looks like they've imported the ZX Spectrum and CPC version graphics, though, and just recoloured them. Music on the title screen again, uh, but that isn't the themes, the famous theme song from the TV show. But it's probably the best overall version, but that's not saying much. Uh, four years later, a new Nightmare game appeared for the ST and Amiga, which was pretty much a clone of uh, Dungeon Master and bared little resemblance to the TV show. And you can also find a board game released by MB Games of Nightmare in 1992, which is kind of cool, and seven books to tie in with the uh, TV show. And you can also see on Ashen's channel, they did a um, remade version of Nightmare with the original cast, starring Ashen's and others, um, for a one-off special of Nightmare. And it's a shame that he didn't return for more, though. But that's a very, very good watch. Ah, uh, the monster's here. Right, I think we're now searching for the pitch, which is uh, should be in this one of these dungeon passages. So we we got a spade earlier, and we dig ground, and we have to dig the ground there. Now, um, you need to explore around these dungeon passages. The one we just started with there, and the one to the left. Then there's one to the right, and one north of the one to the right. So that's the four different locations that the pitch can appear in. It seems usually it's the one just north of here. Um, I think the pitch is like a black tar-like substance. It's a bit of an old-fashioned name. Uh, might confuse a few people. This is quite a confusing game for a kid to be playing. Ah, there it is. It looks like a black substance. This pitch is needed to defeat the dragon. And we're now very, very close to the end of the game. Um, so I'm just scrolling through my notes here. Um, part of this solution, um, what I'm using, uh, was written up by Nish Campbell of cpcgamereviews.com. Um, and very, very handy. And I've been following a map and other tips and solutions from various ZX Spectrum magazines of the day. Talking of magazines, I went looking for an Amsterdam action review and I couldn't find one. I don't think they ever reviewed this game. If they did and I'm wrong, please let me know. But I went through all of 1987 and 1988 issues and I didn't find a review of Nightmare. Maybe they might have reviewed the Ricochet budget re-release. I don't know. Um, as for my review, guys, um, I find this hard to score, really. Um, the graphics are, are kind of detailed, but they don't, it doesn't really feel like Nightmare in terms of in, with the graphics. Uh, the game doesn't really feel like Nightmare that much, save for a few certain things in it. Um, there's no sound. The music is terrible on the title screen. Um, but it's actually a fair, once you get into it and, and learn what you need to do, mostly read the damn manual. Most people go into this game without reading the manual. I can't figure out what the hell is supposed to be happening. Oh, we've just found King Helmet here and you can talk to the king if you want to, although he doesn't really help much. Um, and we're very, very close to the dragon. There you go. He said that a dragon lies in the dungeons. Um, but yeah, I... <sighs> 
it's better than I thought it was. First impressions are that this is terrible. Maybe like a three out of ten kind of game. Um. I'm going to be a bit more generous. I think you need to spend a bit of time with it, learn it. Um, there's a, probably a, quite a bit to this game that you don't realise. So overall, I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10, which might surprise a few people. But um, you need to read the manual. And there's plenty of clues in the game by talking to the oracles that people just don't know about because, again, they haven't really read the manual. It's still pretty confusing, and some of the questions and puzzles are quite tough for kids to solve. Here's the dragon. What I've done there is use the anvil spell to take out the enemies, and what we need to do now is throw the fat, um, throw the locket, and then throw the pitch. And apparently, that kills a dragon! Way and there you go. We have to de we have defeated the dragon, escaped the dungeon, and there's Treyguard. Ha! You have beaten the dungeon of deceit. Congratulations, you have earned your spurs as a knight. My dungeons hunger for you still. And there you go. There is nightmare on the Amster CPC, and basically the Zelic Spectrum because it's identical. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna give this a six out of ten. May seem a bit generous, but mm, there's a bit to it. A bit more to it than I thought there was. But it's, in terms of comparing this to the TV show, it's not a great um, license at all. But I suppose they've tried hard and fallen short. And I'm sure Trey Guard was not very well pleased with this. Anyway, thank you for watching. <laughs> I can't cope with any more of this music. Thank you guys, take care, and goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.